Ooh, it'd be something with cone bits in it. I love Americone Dream. Like butter pecan, but with waffle bits? Oh, God, if they could bring a butter pecan into Halo Top. Butter pecan is my favorite flavor. Halo Top, call me. You rang? No Halo Top ice cream, but I guarantee you it's going to be delicious. I just had a thought. Butter pecan ice cream with waffle bits, but with a little bit of brown butter in there? This won't be healthy, Mark. Sorry, buddy. Just use it as a cheat meal. Just, I will send it to you. Butter pecan dulce de leche. I don't know why I thought of this, but we're gonna take about two cups worth of pecans and crush them by hand, or you can buy crushed pecans because that would have been the smart choice to do. Take about two tablespoons of butter, throw that dab in there, and unlock the true potential of this recipe with a little bit of condensed milk. Throw your crushed pecans and your dab of butter over the stove over just a very low heat until the butter starts to melt. It's going to actually start to smell like buttered popcorn. Now when that happens, you're going to add in about a half a can worth of your condensed milk or about five ounces. We're gonna cook this over a very low heat and just kind of let it hang out until a lot of that condensed milk gets cooked into what looks almost like a buttered pecan caramel. It's going to look a little bit hard at this point and it will harden as it cools, but we're going to actually use a little bit of warm water to kind of bring those sugar crystals up to temperature. So that way it'll be pliable for when we add this to our ice cream. You can't have this be too thick, otherwise it can't actually incorporate itself into the ice cream. Now for your beautiful frozen custard base. For this, we're gonna need one and a half cups worth of heavy cream, yes, it's quite a bit, and dump that into a bowl that we're gonna use separately. This is super important for later. Now we're gonna fill up one and a half cups worth of regular whole milk and just making sure you can actually see how much is in there, followed by six egg yolks. We wanna separate the egg yolks from the egg whites. The egg whites you can save for later. I'm just gonna make an omelet with it, but we do need to put all six egg yolks into here. I'm also separating two of the egg whites for the waffle batter later. The reason why we wanna separate the heavy cream with the egg yolks from the milk is because we're actually only going to heat up the milk with your sugar. This is gonna be two thirds of a cup of sugar. And like always with ice cream, a pinch of salt. We're also gonna hit this with about a teaspoon worth of vanilla extract and give this a nice whisk to incorporate all the sugar and all the milk. Bring this over to your stove and we're gonna start gently heating up this milk and sugar. And I say gently because you absolutely do not want to scorch the milk. We're looking to just dissolve all of the sugar in the milk and that way we're going to easily incorporate this into our heavy cream and eggs. Now this is the tempering part and I want you to see how slowly I start off doing this. You wanna do this very slowly so that way you don't end up with scrambled eggs because let's be honest, nobody wants scrambled egg ice cream. Just saying that makes me wanna throw up in my mouth a little bit. Once you have the majority of your milk and sugar in your eggs and cream, you can go ahead and start quickly adding this in. Now take that entire mixture, place it back into your pot and place this back onto the stove over again a very low heat. This takes about 10 to 15 minutes of constant stirring, constant whisking, so again, we don't have scrambled eggs. We're gonna bring this to a nappe consistency or what coats the back of a spoon or just bring it up to 160 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna go ahead and strain the entire thing just to catch anything that may have coagulated too hard. Luckily, we didn't have too many scrambled egg bits, so we're gonna be okay. Take this entire thing and place it into an ice bath, so just a bunch of ice water. This is super important because it is going to stop the cooking process and cool this down faster. Once all of your ice has melted, throw a lid on it and place it in the fridge overnight or in the freezer for about an hour because I'm lazy. Brown butter straight up. For this, we're gonna need about three to four tablespoons worth of whole fresh unsalted butter. Place this over your stove over a low heat until you start to see it char just a bit. This is when it starts to turn into brown butter. Any further than this and it will burn and you do wanna make sure you take your time with this. So Mark wants waffle bits and waffle bits he shall receive. For this, we're gonna use two egg whites that we separated earlier, two thirds of a cup of all purpose flour, three tablespoons of whole milk, a pinch of salt, and two tablespoons worth of melted butter. We're also gonna hit it with just a teaspoon of vanilla. 
and you're gonna need a half cup of sugar because my GoPro stopped working. After you get your GoPro back and working again, go ahead and whisk this thing pretty hard until you actually start developing a little bit of gluten and you get this really nice stringiness to the batter. Bust out your $15 ice cream cone waffle maker, spray it down just a little bit and get it heated up. Now you absolutely do not need a waffle maker like this. You can do these in a pan, but since I had it, I'm going to use it. Put in about two tablespoons worth of your waffle batter into your machine and give it a good press. Mine looked like this because the sugar didn't incorporate all the way, but they're still really nice. This is what you want your waffles to sound like. I don't have a voice like Mark, but I got these crunchy waffles, so I hope that made you happy. Go ahead and break these down by hand. Don't crush them in a blender or anything like that. You want nice big chunks for this. Spin to win, always spinning and winning. For this, take your ice cream maker of choice. Mine happens to be this really old Cuisinart ice cream maker that I paid about $40 for. Dump in all of your chilled ice cream base into this, and we're gonna spin this to manufacturer's instructions until it's ready. As our ice cream machine struggles, we're gonna take some reheated brown butter out of the microwave and slowly pour this in. And I say slowly because I didn't do it as slowly as I should have. If you pour your brown butter in slowly, you'll get these beautiful bursts of brown butter within the actual ice cream batter and it becomes phenomenal. After about 12 to 13 minutes is how long mine took and it should look like soft serve, this thing is ready to go. Now, once you have your ice cream out, you kind of have to work quickly, but I did learn a couple of things after making ice cream for salt and straw for over a year or so, and we're gonna do some of those things to this ice cream. Ice cream are like ogres, so we're gonna take all of those beautiful waffle bits and gently fold this in by hand. You don't wanna put this into the machine directly while it's spinning because you will start crushing it and it'll incorporate too much into the actual ice cream. We want those chunks of waffle bits. Just look at how gentle you have to fold this. From here, take your container of choice, preferably a deep pint container, and dump in a small layer of your ice cream. Then we're gonna take our beautiful dulce de leche buttered pecans and layer that directly on top of your first layer of ice cream. Then more ice cream onto this. Make sure it's a nice thick boy layer. And from here, more buttered pecan, dulce de leche. You want to, you can make as many layers as you want, but I like two layers of pecan, three layers of ice cream. That is one of the better ratios you can go for. Once you have your ice cream on top, spread it out and make sure you start gently tapping your container onto your cutting board to get out any air pockets. Take a piece of parchment paper, put it on top to seal out any gunk, seal it, throw it in the freezer for at least four to five hours, preferably overnight. And we did make a second one for Mark. It's been about four or five hours and I really wanna try this ice cream, so we're not gonna wait overnight. Lucian, excuse me, can I get into the freezer? No, you're gonna have to, thanks buddy. We're gonna crack open this smaller guy. It's like peeling off the plastic on brand new headphones or computer or whatever. Take a really nice ice cream scooper. You gotta use one of these real ice cream scoopers with a little bit of warm water and look at how creamy and luscious this custard came out to be. You have all these beautiful layers. Make sure you pack your scoop really well so there's no air within the scoop. This is what makes me the most excited. Look at the inside of that. You have these layers of pecan and, and all the waffle bits and all the creams and this is gonna be, you're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna go into it. Oh my God. Look at this bite. Oh my God, that's so good. <laughs> It's so good. Uh huh. Oh my god. Oh, that's amazing. Holy crap. This is one of the best ice creams I've ever made. I have worked at Salt and Straw for about a year making ice cream for them. This is fantastic. It's it's rich custard. Then you get the crispy bits of the waffle, and then you get the nice pecan that's toasted, and a little bit of the brown butter. Mark, you know what? Good call on those flavor combos. And you know what, buddy? Hit me up if you want that other pint that's in there. I'll ship it to you. Just you just gotta you just gotta hit me in the DMs. You know what's your favorite style of ice cream? Honestly, this is a lot of fun to make, and this is now one of my favorites. My name is Chef TK. I hope I taught you something today. Get subscribed. Remember, keep playing with your food. I'm telling you, Mark.
I'm so out of line with the phrase game. Let's take a break, pinning on day. So good. Thanks for the recommendation, buddy.